you remember your own baptisms? Good. But if you were a cradle Catholic like me, you were probably about as aware of your surroundings as this candle here. After all, we baptized when we were just a few weeks old. Still, even from the time when our church was in its infancy, we baptized not only adults but children as well. Jesus himself told Nicodemus that unless a man is reborn in water and the Holy Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. The church has always understood this to mean that, that children should not be deprived of baptism because they are baptized into the faith of the church, a faith proclaimed for them by their parents and their godparents. And hopefully we've always understood that to fulfill the true meaning of the sacrament, children must be formed in the faith, the foundation of which is the sacrament itself. So, let me ask you, just what is Baptism. What does it mean? Look at all those hands shoot up. Okay. It's the call to live a life of faith. It takes away original sin. It makes us God's adopted children and part of the body of Christ. It's the gateway to the other sacraments of the church. It's one of three sacraments that leaves an indelible mark on our souls that can never be taken away. <coughs> and it powers our lifetime pilgrimage of, of commitment and discipleship. It's the death to the old self and the resurrection to new life in Christ. Baptism is a matter of water and spirit, and our initiation through it begins just the same way as the first lines of Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was moving over the face of the waters. The chaotic waters that, that, that are life-giving, yet dangerous, were put in order by the Holy Spirit hovering over them, which is exactly what He does with us in the churning sea of our own brokenness that we're born with. The life and death meaning of water continues with the story of Noah and the flood, which brought forth the death of the old way of humanity, so that it could have a new life, a life conformed with God through Noah and his family. And it's there in the parting of the Red Sea from the book of Exodus. The water meant death to those who opposed God's will, but opened a life-giving path for God's people to pass from slavery to freedom. Just as we are enabled to pass from the slavery of sinfulness to the freedom of God's life of grace and redemption. Okay. So, considering all of this, does anybody else find it just a little bit bizarre that the sinless Son of God would insist on a baptism of purification from sin? Even his cousin John the Baptist was baffled. In Matthew's version of the story, he tells Jesus, I need to be baptized by you and you come to me. The challenge of administering a baptism of repentance, which was what John was all about, to one who had no sin was just a little overwhelming to him. So what gives? Father alluded to it in the opening uh, lines 
rest of the Mass today. I want you to think about it in light of what we just celebrated a couple of weeks ago. The object of Jesus' baptism is the same as the object of His coming. To identify Himself with sinful humanity. When we didn't the prophet Isaiah foretell that He would be numbered among the transgressors. His baptism was in complete harmony with the purpose of His coming. He had no sin to repent. Yet, he was publicly identifying himself with sinners <coughs> all the same. We know through life experience that the innocent often share the burden of the guilty. For example, you wives out there, let's say one day your husband comes home and you ask him how his day went. And he says, baby, I robbed a bag today. And I shot one of the guards, but don't worry about it because it doesn't concern you. <laughs> what? Unless you're brain dead, you realize that your life has just changed for the worse, not from something you did. Unless, well, even though you're not going to suffer the same consequences of of your husband, you're going to suffer the burden of his guilt just the same. And that's just exactly what Jesus did when he came and was baptized. That's what his baptism means to us today. He shared the burden of our guilt. Many, many years before, when he was just 12 years old, Jesus said that he must be about his father's business. And now, he was revealing just what that business was. The salvation of us, of all mankind. As a boy, the temple in Jerusalem, it had been the, the origin of his mission that he emphasized. In the waters of the Jordan, it was the nature of his mission. And when he humbly, obediently, and freely took on that chaotic, churning sea of humanity's brokenness, what happened? The Holy Spirit, in the form of a dove, once again hovered over the water to put things in order. Later on in Luke's Gospel, Jesus tells his disciples something that, that really puzzled him, them. He said, there is a baptism that I must be baptized in, and how great is my anguish until it is accomplished. With the baptism in the Jordan, he was identified with sinners. In the baptism of his death,